I don't think that young people, in especially in later days in, well, in junior high, high school, maybe even earlier than that, are taught enough to think about what they want and how they would go about getting it. And I mean what they want in a deep sense, like how their friendships could be better, how their relationships with their parents could be better, how their life could be better, practically speaking. So we tried to design a program to help younger people do the self-authoring program, but my health interfered with that and it, it fell by the wayside, unfortunately. But it's helpful for people to take stock of themselves and to chart a course. And I don't think our education system does a very good job of helping people develop a, a vision of themselves, a story for themselves. And it, it's a problem because it also means that they're not ennobled or encouraged the way they should be. And I've seen this all constantly during my lectures that people are so happy to be encouraged. They're often met with skepticism instead. And I think that's part of the problem with what's happening in our culture politically too, is that you know, there's this terrible critique of our culture that it's all its institutions are fundamentally predicated on arbitrary power, the exercise of arbitrary power. And that implies that the ambitions of people who wish to join that culture and to thrive are expressions of tyrannical, oppressive, arbitrary power. It's very demoralizing to young people. And I don't believe it's true because I don't think the fundamental motivation is to exploit others. Mm. I think that people who do that fail, generally speaking, uh, often precipitously. Societies that organize themselves around that principle are miserable and collapse. It's fu they're, they're full of deceit and backstabbing and distrust. It's hell. And so, I think that people are, young people are best encouraged. And that means that you actually have to, you have to sort of like them. Like you're a mentor. It's like, I'm really on your, I'm the, on the side of the good in you and I hope it manifests itself. And I think that's what trust is for, by the way. Mm. You know, you should trust other people. Why? They can bite. Why would you trust them? Well, because it's courageous too. And that way you elicit the best from them. At least that's the best opportunity you have. You're going to get hurt sometime. You're going to get hurt distrusting too. But societies without trust are hell on earth. So trusting that's for, the that's for sure. next generation though starts with you having it in the first place, right? That's sort of passing along those patterns is if I don't trust anyone, I'm going to instill that in my child. Like well, yeah. the world's not to be well, trusted. You can, you, well, you can try to change that. If you know that trust is courage, that can help. Because while trust can be just naivety, I trust you because I'm too foolish to know the difference. You know, I've never been hurt. I've never encountered someone malevolent, so I'm naive and I, I trust. That's not trust. That's blind faith in an environment that's been too benevolent for your own good. But trust, that's more like well, we'll think the best of you to begin with and see what happens. And then if you make a mistake, well, we'll deal with that and we'll go back to trust. And those are stable negotiating strategies. And so that's young people need to be confronted with that and then they need to be helped to chart their course. And that's hard, you know, it takes a fair bit of individual attention because people are so complicated. I produce this other mm -hmm. technology at self-authoring that helps people write about their past, analyze their faults and their virtues, and write a plan for the future. Yeah. It's a useful way of figuring out who you are. You kind of have to hit yourself against the world, but you know, you tell the story about your past and that, that helps you understand where you came from. You figure out your virtues and your faults, that sort of helps you understand your strengths and weaknesses. And then a plan gives you a course for the future. It's hard to do all that writing, but it's hard to blunder through life too without a plan. So it's hard either way. Pick your hard. So, you always talk about that. Choose your, choose, choose the difficult to the difficult to choose you eventually. And you might not like it as much, right? 
Yeah, well, yeah. when it's necessary, like I wouldn't say to go to go out of your way necessarily to make your life difficult, but if you have a difficult choice in front of you and it's either abandon what you're you know you should be doing or do the difficult thing, well, you're going to pay a price for abandonment. So and I guess I would also say that to uh, to understand yourself it's quite useful to try to not lie as you tangle yourself up in your own lies. People think they can get away with lying, but we you can't get away with falsifying the structure of the world. You're going to pay for it. I've never seen anybody get away with anything in my clinical practice. No, something the other shoe always dropped. Always, always. And unsurprisingly, if you drop a weight on your head, above your head, like it's fine until it hits you. Yeah. But then there's changing your mind. Yeah, there you can be wrong. That's different. That's a good point though. It's difficult to dissociate ignorance from from lying, but you know, you get punished when you're wrong often, but that's different, you know. It's it's not like it's nothing to be ignorant, to be wrong. It's still hard on you. But it's a different kind of hard to be willfully wrong. Responsibility I think is an incredible message. Yeah, the responsibility element has been well received by people and I think maybe that's because that message isn't being delivered as effectively as it should be. The idea that meaning meaning is to be found in responsibility. Yeah, you're saying it hasn't which, been which developed? I, you you're saying it hasn't been it hasn't been promoted as much? Well, there's so much of an emphasis on rights. I mean, imagine our, what, if our if our culture was as dominated by discussion of responsibility as it was dominated by discussion of rights. Yeah, right. Completely. I mean, that's just not how it is at all. Right. And that's strange because your rights, in some sense, are my responsibility, and vice versa. So, right, because your accorded rights, it's distance from other people in some sense, and for them it's the same. And so you can't have one discussion without the other. Mm -hmm. But we, but our discussion has been very one-sided. And I think that's hard on people because it's about what you're owed. Yeah. And it isn't obvious to me that, I don't know, it doesn't, it isn't, it's not like not getting what you're owed isn't annoying. It, it is, if you feel that, that an injustice has right. been committed. But right. it isn't obvious to me that people find the deepest meaning in their life in getting what they're owed. I really do think that people find more significance in their life in being of ut use, utility and service to other people. That's how it looks to me. So, and often that's discussed in a sort of should way, you know, you should be good to other people. It's like, well, your life is better if you do that. That's a different way of putting it. And you can get people to think about that. It's like, well, remember those times when you were, when people were particularly happy with something that you did, something for them. How did you feel about that? Well, you can figure that out for yourself. Maybe it didn't matter, but probably it mattered. Probably you'd like to have that happen a lot more. But I think even so, more so the feeling that you get when you have a responsibility and you deliver on it. Mm -hmm. I think that for me, that feels even more meaningful that you uphold your end of the bargain, that you make someone's life better. That feels even better than when someone says, thank you for that. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. like, right, right, right. No, uh, absolutely. No, I wasn't thinking so much about the consequences of the thanks. Yeah. That's just an indication that you yeah. did something, you know, that was that was productive and useful and 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 caring, let's say. And yeah, I, I and I think people know that too, that when they're operating properly, that's, well, parents find tremendous meaning in, in the service they provide to their children, obviously. And I think you find that within a relationship, what you give, I mean, there's, it's reciprocal, obviously, there has to be reciprocity, but, but it's better to concentrate at least half the time on what you're giving. Right. One of the real advantages, I think a lot of the current political movements are quasi-religions, essentially, and religious structures have collapsed very badly, and so these things arise to take their place. 
because we need a religious structure because that's what provides us with our fundamental story. The fundamental story of life is a religious story, by definition. That's, that's what I mean by that. It's the most fundamental story you have is the closest thing you have to a religion. So We started there. I mean, we started with the stories. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and metaphysics be damned, but, you know, I don't know what the fundamental significance of consciousness is, So, and neither does anybody else. So there's plenty of room for metaphysical speculation. It's hard to know what each person's destiny is, but... In any case, the problem with so many ideological stories is that they give you an easy enemy. And that's extremely dangerous. And maybe the enemy, they always give you an enemy. Yeah, that's a real problem. So is, no, is that, that seems so like one of the biggest problems, is there's always an enemy. Well, the biggest problem is the enemy isn't you. You're your worst enemy. I and agree. That's the right place to start. And so... You know, one of the advantages, I think, of Christianity, although I don't think it's limited to Christianity, is that it insists that that's the battleground. You. Right. And so if you, if you need an enemy, and maybe you do, look within. <laughs>